I did one or two videos for Hint Water, and they still send water to us today for if you guys are watching on the video, I'm kind of always drinking Hint or some sort of seltzer. I got hooked. Mm -hmm. I, I was a Dr. Pepper drinker, so anything with fizz that doesn't have sugar. And then sugar, LaCroix. Yep, yep. So and it was you. it was LaCroix, then Hint, and then I got some of that lemon stuff. Lemon Perfect. Lemon Perfect, that is so good, but so the delicious. only problem with that is it actually does expire. It does, yeah. So and I you come, have to keep it in a fridge right now. Exactly. Yeah. I come in and out of the office so often yeah. that it just didn't work out with yeah. shipments. Um, and then there's so many other, what's the... They have a peach flavor too. Ugly. In, in the cans, yes. Ugly, right? Yes. Blue can? Yes. Yeah. Because, and this is a total tangent, I'm looking more to brands that don't use plastic bottles just because right. it's like, it just feels bad, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Aluminum, you know, it's just infinitely recyclable. So any anyone who does it in aluminum cans, I'm kind of like, oh, maybe that's better anyways. But there's so many brands out there with water. Anyways, we first met... Uh, via a hint ad that I did mm -hmm. for hint and it wasn't to my main audience on Not Instagram or Twitter but it was a one minute video that was posted to Facebook and they put ad spend behind it and I basically kind of explained what hint is kind of showed it in my life and you guys put a ton of paid media behind it millions of views and you sold the crap out of Hint Water. So for the people who might understand surface level influencers, okay, Sarah has an audience on YouTube, so then brands pay her to advertise their product, influencer marketing. There's a whole other level, you know, beyond that, of using influencers for paid media as well, which can be a component of influencer marketing. Maybe you have a YouTube video that's sponsored um, you know, it's on my channel, but hey, maybe you put, you also want ads for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So explain that side of things. Cause that's what I don't talk about as much. Cause I'm so busy with my YouTube channel. That could be an entirely different part of my brand that I totally. could, which we always talk of, about, <laughs> which we always talk about. But at the end of the day, you know, I think my focus is just on different things, but it's such a huge thing for people with personalities, people with content creation skills, Holy smokes, this is a way they can really help brands help their own brand get attention. Sorry. Yeah, so I think there's there's a couple steps before that too. So one was the fact that um, I quickly identified you had LaCroix in all of your videos. Yep. And it was even at one point your header photo on Twitter. Yep. I loved it. And I was so it was my goal <laughs> to basically get you off of LaCroix. <laughs> and and so, you know what actually got me was the fact that you... Uh, Hint had still water as well, right. um, which because I'm always fizzy gets a little uh, what's called anti acid uh, what's acid it? reflux acid reflux Refluxing. yeah sometimes I get some of that yeah so no, I feel that yeah um, so I think the you know initially it was it was almost what you could consider like vetting the content creator um, I I had already watched your videos before and I knew you were a really good vlogger. You had also built a following because you're really good at speaking to an audience through a camera, which um, which is basically the trick for creating good ads. And so when I saw you were drinking all this LaCroix, um, you know, a mutual friend of ours gave me your address. Not creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you, I think, like 100 bottles of Hint water, um, mostly peach. And it was just and we didn't even know each other at that point. But very quickly, I saw on your Twitter, your Instagram stories, and even in a YouTube video that I think over-indexed for views, that specific video, um, you had plugged Hint in as just something that you truly enjoyed the product. I've never heard of them before, but they're called Hint. They sent me. I've already drank in like six of them, but look at all of this water they sent me. This isn't a hashtag ad for Hint or anything, but I just, that was really nice for you guys to send me some water. So I'm gonna give you a shot and it's actually delicious. LaCroix, you, you're sleeping. You were sleeping and someone slid into thy DMs and sent me thy water. And you're so vlogging five times a day. Any daily content vlogs. Will, will make it. I remember yeah. this was, <laughs> about time, a, it was about a hard <laughs> drive failing. Oh God! Uh, yeah. And I think it got like a hundred thousand views in a week. It was insane. So funny, probably because I did a really sad face. Probably. So I probably <laughs> crushed it. But when I was vlogging five times a week, 
it was the thing of I'm filming everything in the day. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, someone sent me, you know, five boxes of free water. What's that about? Let's taste it. Oh, tasty. Moving right. on to the next thing, right. you know? So but there was this yeah. whole montage you did and it, it, um, and then we connected on Twitter and we had some back and forth between Hint and you on Twitter. And it was just a very organic, like it, it wasn't like we were paying you be- right. to post or talk about the product. You genuinely liked the product. And so that's when I, you know, reached out and said, hey, let's actually do something mm-hmm. where we can sponsor a piece of content. But in my mind, you know, I focus more on the paid media side of things. And so, um, you know, th- there'll be days where if we're spending $30,000 a day in ads, we can reach tens of millions of people. And so I was like, you know, I don't want to necessarily pay for a video that might get 100,000 views. I want to see how I can leverage Sarah's personality and the way she talks to the camera and her likeness for the brand. Turn that into a video that we, you know, we chop up. Um, your, your video editor, actually. And then, um, and then we run it through Facebook ads using your page and your Instagram profile, mm-hmm. but coming from the dollars of hints media. And so it was essentially taking content you created and we pushed it out and amplified it, I guess, with advertising. And, you know, we had a, it was basically a video. We tested, I think, like 50 or 60 different variations of copy. We found the one that worked best. We had that one posted to your page. There was a very clear link. It was like hint.co slash Sarah. Um, Everything was very fluid in that sense. And then it went to a landing page. There was a very clear offer. People could come in. It was one page they had to read. They learned everything about the product. And then they were out. And so it was basically, you know, in hindsight, it was cheaper than anything we would pay for a video shoot or for a campaign video to be created and then run. Mm -hmm. Um, It was also something that was very native within people's social feeds. So instead of seeing something with like a beautiful background and well lit, you know, Mm -hmm. shot or whatever, it was just you kind of popping up in people's social feeds being like, hey, I drink hint. This is why it's very native to the platform. Exactly. Exactly. And so, I mean, that's still something we do today where we will work with either content creators or even just, you know, um, just general user generated content. Like there are so many opportunities where, um, you know, people are like, how do I make creative for free or how do I get creative done really cheaply? You just prop up your iPhone. You make sure that you you have like a square within your screen that you're recording in and you film and then you go to your computer, you chop out, you know, you, you, you stitch it together and then you add subtitles and that's an ad right there. As easy as it is to, hey, just do X, Y, Z, there is a certain aspect of it. Having someone who does know how to talk to a camera, having someone who- It's the hardest part. Can be natural on camera because as much as you want it to come off as an everyday person, you know, the girl next door, there is a certain level of knowledge or experience that comes into it where you can be comfortable in front of the camera doing those things. Yeah. And I think it takes a little bit of work to find those people. But what's great about this way of doing influencer marketing, paid media, these people don't need to be 5 million subscriber right. YouTube stars. These people can maybe be actors who maybe never made it big, but they're really, they have a really great presence on camera. Right. You know, they can be joe schmo from a down down the street that's just charismatic and knows how you know to light up a room and that translates to camera so there's a lot of different people it it just opens up the the scope of people you can use because now you're not worrying about the 20 biggest youtubers in this space you're like oh okay let me open up my eyes to the people around me who I go to work with every day right it really I mean it's just a whole nother world three performing um creators you could say right now for user generated content are people who are just absolute they've never done content in their life but when they are when they try a product that we work with or they can get passionate about a product um it just it kind of just makes itself happen